The ear is responsible for translating variations in air pressure, whether from speech, music, or other sources, into the neural activity necessary for our perception and interpretation of sound. The ear can be divided into three principal sections, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Each of these parts performs a specific function in processing sound information. The external ear, which consists of the pinna, concha, and auditory meatus, gathers sound energy and focuses it on the eardrum or tympanic membrane. The configuration of the external ear amplifies sound, particularly at the frequency ranges of 2 to 5 kilohertz, a range that is important for speech perception. From the ear canal, the sound waves vibrate the eardrum, which in turn vibrates three tiny bones in the middle ear, the malleus, incus, and stapes. The stapes vibrates a small membrane at the base of the cochlea, the oval window, which transmits amplified vibrational energy to the fluids of the cochlea. Because the entire structure is filled with non-compressible fluid, movement within the cochlea in response to a push on the oval window requires the presence of a movable outlet membrane. This membrane is the round window, which separates the scala tympani from the middle ear. The complex structures of the inner ear convert sound into neural activity. In mammals, the auditory portion of the inner ear is a coiled structure called the cochlea. The region nearest the oval window membrane is the base of the spiral. The other end, or top, is referred to as the apex. Along the length of the cochlea are three parallel canals, the scala tympani, the scala vestibuli, and the scala media. The principal elements for converting sounds into neural activity are found on the basilar membrane, a flexible structure that separates the scala tympani from the scala media. Let's take a closer look at the basilar membrane by unrolling the cochlea and peering inside. The basilar membrane is about five times wider at the apex of the cochlea than at the base, even though the cochlea itself narrows toward its apex. It vibrates in response to sound transmitted to the fluid-filled cochlea by deflections of the oval window initiated by the bones of the middle ear. Acoustical stimuli initiate a traveling wave in the cochlea which propagates from the base toward the apex of the basilar membrane, growing in amplitude and slowing in velocity until a point of maximum displacement is reached. High frequencies displace the base of the basilar membrane where it's stiffer, and low frequencies maximally displace the apex, giving rise to a topographical mapping of frequency. Within the scala media and atop the basilar membrane is the organ of corti, the collective term for all the elements involved in the transduction of sounds. The organ of corti includes three main structures, the sensory cells, called hair cells, an elaborate framework of supporting cells, and the terminations of the auditory nerve fibers. Each human ear contains one row of about 3,500 inner hair cells, and three rows of outer hair cells, totaling about 12,000 cells. Afferent nerve fibers running from the inner hair cells account for 95% of the afferent nerve fibers in the auditory nerve and give rise to the perception of sound. The outer hair cells receive efferent inputs from the brain that help sharpen the frequency-resolving power of the cochlea. From the upper end of each hair cell protrude relatively stiff, tiny hairs called stereocilia. Each hair cell has 50 to 200 stereocilia. The heights of the stereocilia increase progressively across the hair cell, so the tops approximate an inclined plane. 
Atop the organ of corti is the tactorial membrane. The stereocilia of the outer hair cells extend into indentations in the bottom of the tectorial membrane. The movements of fluid in the cochlea produce vibrations of the basilar membrane. These vibrations bend the stereocilia inserted into the tectorial membrane. Depending upon the direction of the bend, ion channels in the hair cells either open or close. Ultimately, a change in ion conductance in hair cells will either increase or decrease the firing rate of auditory nerve fibers. Fine filamentous structures, known as tip links, run in parallel to the plane of bilateral symmetry, connecting the tips of adjacent stereocilia. The tip links provide the means for rapidly translating hair bundle movement into a receptor potential. When the hair bundle is deflected toward the tallest stereocilium, cation selective channels open near the tips of the stereocilia. Opening of the channels causes an influx of potassium ions and a rapid depolarization of the entire hair cell. The depolarization in turn leads to an influx of calcium ions through voltage-gated calcium channels at the base of the hair cell. The calcium triggers the release of neurotransmitter from synaptic vesicles, also located at the base of the hair cell. This stimulates the afferent nerve fibers, which form part of the auditory nerve, and the signal is thus passed along to the brain.